Our next comic is an accomplished TV writer and performer, a certified raw food chef, and she can meditate like a motherfucker. <laughs> she once agreed to be interviewed by a cat puppet, so we probably shouldn't be too surprised she said yes to us, but we're very honored to have her here nonetheless. Please welcome to the stage, Laura House. <laughs> just turned into Prince right there. Again, what? Um, oh, um, <laughs> hello. This is what a great night about empowering women. Wow. <laughs> Some of you were not on board for that message. Some of you were like, oh, is that what we're, mm. I don't know. I don't know if that's my thing. I'm all for empowering women. My boyfriend says I'm super empowered. And so it's <laughs> pretty great. Um, <laughs> Yes, I meditate, I teach uh, meditation for many reasons, among them to make the Trader Joe's parking lot a safer place <laughs> for all of us. Like my vision of world peace is very local. <laughs> like I'm like, I get that there's stuff in Palestine, you guys, but have you been to Trader Joe's? because the Prius death machines will ride up on you in the parking lot. And no, no matter how many people are inside, there are not enough parking spaces for us who need almond milk. And if there are 100 people inside, there's like 70 parking spaces. If there were four people inside, there would be three parking spaces. <laughs> it's some kind of magical Hogwartsian algorithm in that parking lot that turns us all into monsters. That's why I call the Trader Joe's parking lot the Hunger Games. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I've had a lot of good teachers. We're talking about mentors and empowerment and women and teachers. I, uh, I had this teacher, I don't want to give away my age exactly, <laughs> but I had a teacher named Miss Willis, and it was endlessly funny to me when she gave an assignment <laughs> to say, what you talking about, Miss Willis? Every time. <laughs> Probably not to her, I didn't care. Just like Arnold, it was just gonna keep coming out of me. <laughs> what you Page 67, one through three. What you talking about, Miss Willis? <laughs> um, and I taught, I'm from a family of teachers and right out of college, I started teaching seventh grade, which is too young to enter the public school system because I was 23, so I'm going in hungover and trying to hide hickeys. And <laughs> when you're just like, all right, you got, hey, that's just a curling iron burn. Open your books. <laughs> and uh, I'm short and I looked young and some of the kids I didn't have in class just thought I was a kid. And this one guy came up to me in the hall and he goes, hey, you wanna go get high? <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> I am off next period. <laughs> Him. I had to be an adult. I was like, that's it, we're going to the office. And this kid <laughs> goes, I'm pretty sure we'll get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get high in the office. And <laughs> I was like, I'm a teacher and I'm taking you to the office. And this kid looked at me and he goes, you're already high. <laughs> so, I'm trying to have authority. Um, <laughs> I've had a lot of great teachers. I feel like one of my biggest teachers really is uh, Oprah Winfrey. I don't know if you've heard of her, but <laughs> she's, uh, she's really like teacher to us all, like teacher and friend, and she has this amazing ability to make us feel like we're like her, even though we're not billionaires. <laughs> but we're just, I'm just like her, and I like, I love like in her magazine, and her show, like whatever she's doing, America had to do it. Like she's up and running, and we're like, I guess I'm doing marathons now, and then eventually she's like, oh, fuck it, let's eat some biscuits, and we're all like, oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, I was not gonna run one more block with you and Bob Green. <sighs> We're back on biscuits. Uh, <laughs> dang. Uh, I did, actually, she had a boot camp at one point, and uh, I did it. A friend of mine shamed me into doing it. Do you have that? Frenemy? 
<laughs> like, I'm doing a boot camp. Do you want to do it with me? And it's like, well, I have to now. If you get all good looking, I can't just stay like this. <laughs> what happened to Laura? She didn't do that boot camp with me. I'm hot. What? You can't just be that one. So <laughs> I was like, all right. So we're on it. And like, you know, it was very strict, like three months. And you end up working out two hours a day. It probably isn't a lot to a lot of you, but it sounded horrible. And uh, <laughs> strict food plan. But online, she was like, I have a lot of things to help you out online. So check it out on Oprah.com. So I did. And one of the things Oprah had to help us out was a section called snacks. And I was like, beeline. If I'm <laughs> going to get in shape, I'm doing it with snacks. <laughs> and so this is when I had to rethink Oprah a little bit, because one of her snacks was herbal tea. <laughs> Are you just gonna act like I haven't known you for 20 years? <laughs> That's not a snack. It's not even a drink. It's leaf water. <laughs> and another one of her snacks she called the Oprah Sunday. I'm as intrigued as you are. <laughs> I was like, a Sunday? I'm totally just gonna shed the pounds eating Sundays. Here's the recipe. I don't see you getting out your pens. <laughs> I said, here's the recipe for the Oprah Sunday. So you take a handful of shredded wheat. <laughs> Somebody's not getting that job at Cold Stone Creamery. I don't care who you are. Take a handful of shredded wheat, and on top of that, bless you, on top of that, put some fresh blueberries. And on top of that, here's the key to the Oprah Sunday, a little bit of milk, oh my God. which is cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's cereal. <laughs> you know it's cereal. <laughs> Apparently, Oprah forgot that it's cereal. <laughs> And that's disturbing, because how rich are you that you just start calling food other food? <laughs> how is this the woman we all relate to that's like, mm, this Sunday is delicious. Is she chewing on a candle and calling it Toblerone? Like, how far does it go? Oh, mm, this is fantastic. Hey, Matt McConaughey, and it's a mop. Yeah, like, what is she? Had she been dieting too long and just there was no fat in her brain to think anymore? Like, it just eat a Snickers. Like, it's better to be fat than crazy. Like, that's not okay. Mm. It's, what a refreshing Sunday with 90 grams of fiber. Just like all good Sundays. How intimidating is she that no one told her? Because this was published on her website. Like, there, it had to have come up. There had to have been people in their Uggs <laughs> going, are you gonna tell her that? I'm not telling her it's Cyril. You tell, you get Sarah to tell her it's Cyril. She's new, she won't even, I'm not, mm, I'm not gonna tell her for that. Like, no one could like get a post-it to Gail. Gail, <laughs> she did it again. Just tell her it's Cyril. <laughs> <laughs> not until I'm on a morning talk show, I'm not telling her it's here. Mm -mm. No, I am not. I got to meet Oprah. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I wrote for a show on Harpo, and uh, uh, on the OWN network, the Rosie show on OWN, and uh, I'm like, I'm plugging it. The Rosie show on OWN, it's been canceled for two years. Tune in, in the past. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyway, so I got that job, and I was so psyched, because I was like, I'm going to meet Oprah. Like, this is, <laughs> I'm going to meet Oprah. Like, I'm going to be in Harpo, in Chicago. It's basically like we're going to school together. <laughs> like, I'm just going to see her in the halls. Like, hey, Opes, what's up? And she'll be like, it's Laura House. And I'll be like, oh, my God, just <laughs> let it go. Um, <laughs> But I was actually very moved by that and excited to meet her. And I didn't want to be, I assume when people meet Oprah, it's just like, oh my God, you're amazing. Like just all like, I wanted to give something to her and we actually have a mutual friend who she had not seen for a long time, uh, her friend Arna. So I was like, Arna says hi. Like I, I had a plan, like I was gonna deliver this 
message of hi. <laughs> this message of <laughs> greeting. It doesn't sound like much, but it was something. It was something to say. And I just imagined that it would be like, oh, hello, hello, hello. And then Arna says hi. And she, oh, Arna, who are you? Come tell me about Arna. How is she? Well, and then we'd split sweet potato pie, and then I'd be the comedy director at OWN. I just, not to have unreasonable expectations, but I felt like we at least had a connection. Also, we do the same meditation. It's a 10,000-year-old practice. There's going to be something to talk about. So I was so excited. And uh, every now and then you'd see her in the hall, but I never knew when the right time was to say, Arna says hi, but I practiced. You can hear how good I am at it. Arna says hi. <laughs> And this is her old friend. They used to have lunch together, and they worked together, and uh, she's what I call my therapist. Anyway, so <laughs> I was super excited, and uh, the, the one day it happened. We're sitting there. We're producing the Rosie O'Donnell show. That's going on in there. We're sitting in this hallway where the producers sat, and there was like a door with like a little window on it, and through that little window, I saw the back of her head. It's edge of your seat stuff, you guys. I appreciate someone responding appropriately. The rest of you just too cool, I guess. I'm not gonna make a noise even though it's really intense. Good for you, you win, I guess. All right. We're just expressing ourselves because we're empowered. All right. You'll figure it out, everybody. <laughs> so. Little window, back of her head. How did I know it was the back of Oprah's head? Would you know the back of God's head? <laughs> turns out, yes. So I was like, this is it. She's coming my way. She turned around and she's walking. She's saying hello to everybody. How are you? She's very gracious and she's heading my way. I'm like, Arna says hi, Arna says hi, Arna says hi. Arna says hi, Arna says hi. She's like coming and she, she turns a corner and she's coming right at me and I burst into tears. <laughs> like a giant loser. <laughs> and it was not stopping. <laughs> I'm a waterfall out of my face all of a sudden. <laughs> it was like my lady parts could not handle the Oprah vicinity. And it was just <laughs> and very, <laughs> Oprah kept walking, and very, <laughs> Very sweetly, my friend and boss put her hand on my leg. She was sitting next to me, and she very sweetly said, don't do that. <laughs> and it was like my soul left my body and was like, what's wrong with you? Arna says hi. <laughs> I totally blew it in meeting Oprah, and uh, I regret that. I regret that I didn't get to say thank you for all she's done, that I didn't get to say Arna says hi. <laughs> <laughs> and that I didn't get to hug her. I feel like a hug from Oprah would be like a homecoming, and that the back of her neck just probably smells like heaven. <laughs> Is that too much? I just feel like it would be a real great experience uh, but mostly I regret that I didn't get to tell her, that's cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the show.